Hello Hi, and welcome. We're John and Regina Forrest. We're here at the Santa Maria Healing Rooms Apostolic Center. Yes. We are so glad you're tuning in. Thank you for being here. Yes, thank you for being here. Regina and I are the leaders of Bridge Relationships. We deal with uh, marriages and relationships, helping people to thrive, not just survive. Also tonight here at the Healing Rooms, we have a guest speaker, Henry Fellaini. We meet at 6 p.m. Hopefully I didn't butcher his name. But um, it's supposed to be a great service tonight, great worship, uh, ministry time. Um, hope you can come. If you're in the area, come personally. And otherwise, hopefully you're going to be tuning in. Right. And then you can get prayer tonight from the healing rooms. And then this week, there's prayer and prophecy available, as mm -hmm. well as live worship and house of prayer sets. So join us. Yeah. So, Regina, what are we going to be talking about today? So, John, what we're going to talk about is <laughs> unity and love, or love and unity. Mm -hmm. And so we just want to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about that, but we want to talk, tell you first about an event that we have coming this yes. weekend. It's been on the calendar for so long, and it's here already. So it's September 22nd and 23rd. Friday night, we give our testimony. It's an amazing testimony of what <coughs> God has done of what God is capable of and who he is and how he loves us so deeply and unconditionally. And then on Saturday, we teach from 9.30 to 4.30 on marriage. And mm -hmm. it's it's amazing. We love it. People always love it. And so we just invite you guys to join us. So you can join yeah. online or in person. And if you want a promo code, you can put your email address in the comments and you will get one. And you can also check us out at bridgerelationships.com or on the yes. Healing Rooms website. Yeah. What were you going to say? One, one of the good things about it is, is it's a great way to jumpstart your marriage if you're in a little rough bump or anything like that. We give you some great tools to work with, how to move forward and step in status in life. To, to allow division not to be any more in the marriage, but and to um, really just refresh. He is and that through that encounter of love, he would be able to also extend, we just speak restoration over your marriage and all marriages, everyone listening, grab hold of that word, just restoration and breakthrough for the things that seem like, you know, you've been just trudging through mud for so long. I, I believe that God has breakthrough for you. And so attach your faith to that word breakthrough and Absolutely. restoration and and if he can do it for us, he can do it for you. And so if you guys knew our story, you would know that You'd understand. we were hopeless, mm -hmm. but for God, but for the grace of God. And hi, Cheryl, I see that you are on. I'm so glad that you are. And we pray for you during this time of grief and mm -hmm. um, just a hard time in your life. And so we're just speaking God's healing and God's love and his faithfulness to you and to your family and to the situations that you face. All right, I do have a prayer request, and I'm going to get to it. Uh, okay, Stephen, he Healing. is so faithful to put this in there all the time for his lungs, for COPD condition, and knee pain. Once again, we just ask you, God, that you would come in your faithfulness and touch Stephen's body. Touch mm -hmm. his knee, touch his lungs. Heal him all conditions. We speak to every system in your body. Yes, the healing Lord. power, the presence of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We declare that by his stripes you are healed. That it's Healing is the children's bread. Absolutely. And, uh, bread is a staple in most homes unless you're on keto diet. So we <laughs> just say healing is the children's bread. It's for you. It's a staple. And we just declare that in your life, Stephen. Absolutely. Amen. We Amen. are having trouble with our um, systems. Technical difficulties. Technical dif difficulties. YouTube and Facebook are both... Um, having a hard time today so we're just going to wing it if we get back on then we will keep praying for you guys but absolutely we want to talk about love as a choice love and then one. unity and how basically we get to choose mm -hmm. we get to choose every day what our day is going to look like we get to choose what our attitude's going to be we get to choose love and it's such an amazing concept to think about it that is. we get to choose love um because a lot of times we're just like, you know, oh, I need more love or, you know, I, I'm not shown love in this situation. But really, it's our choice. 
and we get to love others and you do get you like you know reap what you sow in a lot of situations and so you always want to be sowing love into your marriage into your spouse absolutely into your family into strangers your workplace i had this thought come to my mind regina um you know we've had this situation in the past like you know you had that thing um with your mom which like you know about when you're I'm like, which thing is he going to talk about or the lord mm. and he's saying did you choose you know did you ch did you didn't he ask you to okay i'll yeah. tell the story yeah yeah so i had a little bit of problems with my mom um with just the rejection and different things and mainly i believe it was on my side mm -hmm. because if i would have known how to love well in that season i probably wouldn't have had the issue but i just felt like um you know i couldn't be in relation close relationship with her because i always left there just feeling so pummeled and it took me days john uh, and i were having this conversation and I just said, the Lord just said this to me, make me enough for you right. in this situation where your mom's concerned. So let me be your mom. I know I've shared this before yes, you have. here on this stream. Um, basically, he was saying, let me be your mom. And what that meant is, let me just fill in all the gaps that your mom right now in her brokenness isn't able to fill in you. Let me be the one. And so... It took me a little bit of time, and I realized the Lord was, was asking me to do this. And I knew that one day I'm going to stand before God, mm -hmm. and That's I'm going I mean. to have to give an account. Did I allow him to be enough in this relationship with my mom, or did I just push it aside and not do the hard stuff to get there? Right. And it was a choice. It yeah. definitely was a choice to make Jesus enough and just love my mom. And the... The theme uh, that the Lord was telling me is love without expecting anything in return. Come on. And when we love like that, we're loving like Jesus. And I know that in our society, in our culture, loving and not expecting anything in return is foreign. And um, it's like people are like, no, no, thank you. It's not, that's not what I'm signing up for. Um, but we just want to encourage you guys to, to go ahead and push through in hard situations where you guys may have a hardship in a relationship, even if it's your marriage, to push through and allow Jesus to be enough for you so that you can love the people in your life unconditionally, no matter what, no matter what they choose, no matter how they treat you. You're so full of Jesus that you can love your spouse this is what it was for us after my mom the lord just did a little practice on my mom and then he asked me to do it for john which it was a whole other uh deal Situation, there was totally. so much betrayal in our marriage and i wanted a divorce and the lord just said instead can you be a bridge to john can you lay down your life for him so that he could find you find me use your life as a path so that he can find me and the truth was, I didn't know if John was going to say yes to it. I didn't know right. what John was going to do. But when I got to that place of making Jesus enough, I was able to say yes to the Lord. And then to John, How did yeah. what was that like for you? Well, I mean, it just completely turned my life around. When you, it, when you extended the unconditional love, when you chose to love, so this is what we're talking about, love is a choice. When you chose to love without expecting return, it caused me to recognize that unconditional love and therefore it changed my life. And that's the same that happened for you when you chose to love earlier, you with know. With my mom. Mm -hmm. with you. And, and the reason I brought that up, that came to mind, I feel like the Holy Spirit said that, is because, you know, what we're sharing with, with all, you, all you watching and all that you will eventually watch is, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not saying that this is the way it'll be, but it's a question for the Lord. When I stand before the Lord, when everybody stands, may that, is that a question that's going to come up? Did you choose to love in this situation? It could be, it could be your spouse. It could be a, you know, a, a relative, a friend, somebody that goes cross grain with you and where God's asking you to love them anyways yeah to love you know, the them question without is, expecting you know, anything in return yeah, love just, them unconditionally yeah and so that's just a question that i put out there is did you know when we're standing up for the lord it, it, is it potentially we could be standing for the lord and he could be asking i knew that i would in the situation with john i the lord just told me you know and i just knew one day i'm going to stand before you god 
And I don't want to say, oh, it was too hard. I couldn't do it. Um, even about my mom, I'm like, no, I want to know that because of God's grace, because of the cross, the power of the blood, we're able to do the hard things like love unconditionally, love people who may not ever um, appreciate or love us in mm -hmm. return. And I just knew that when I stand before Jesus on Judgment Day, I want to be able to say, yes, I did it. I did yeah. it. Maybe I did it not great, but I did it. I had a yes in my heart. And we talked a lot about this before, about legacy, that right. your yes is, and your laid down life in, in your yes is a path of your legacy that moves Absolutely. forward and backward. Mm -hmm. And, and it opens up things for those going in front of you. Every yes that John and I make, makes way for our children and our grandchildren, all those we may never meet, to walk in the victory of Jesus. Yeah. And so there's so many components to that, um, to saying yes to love. And so in marriage, what we're talking about is that love is a choice love is a every choice. day and sometimes you don't feel like loving sometimes you don't even like each other very much i mean did i say that yes yeah because I mean, that's it's just, true that's being honest that's being it's not real. that we don't love each other but sometimes you just don't like each other <laughs> and in those moments i mean it's not all the time of course but in those moments you have to choose, choose. to love you mm -hmm. have to choose to move forward like, over and over again like even choose to change your heart at yes. that moment, you know, the heart might be attempting to get hard. Or offended or, or offended. unforgiving. Yeah, whatever. You know? And so we're choosing to change that. Yes. You know? So I love it. Choosing to not be offended is huge when you're choosing love because it's a blocker. It, it can block you from loving. Um, unforgiveness can block you from choosing love. Yeah. So let me ask you this. So when we're talking about the choice to love, the choice to choose, does that fall on the other person? Does it fall on us? Definitely the other person. Just kidding. <laughs> Not really. It falls on us, of course. Um, it always falls on us. We yeah. can't um, we can't say what people are going to do or say. No. But and we're not responsible for others, what they do and what they say and how they respond, but we are responsible for ourselves. Right. I think one of the so greatest things about we that, get to choose. Yeah, it falls is, on us. Is that we can say, you know, God, I did my part. I did my best, so. Right, you know. there's there's this scripture that um, we're way off our notes. Yeah, but that's okay. We're just I flowing. Think... We had no intention of even talking about this, but this scripture that says, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Such a 30 and 31. <laughs> Put him on the spot. I always do that. He knows that scripture. Mark 12, 30 and 31, to love God with your all all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, all your all, and then love your neighbor, this is my closest neighbor, as I love myself. And in doing so, we are preaching the gospel. In doing so, we are creating revival. And so it has to start yeah. with your closest neighbor, the one that you know might be offended with, or you might have unforgiveness towards, or you know, you're not, you don't trust them because they've hurt you. So you put up walls you know, of self-protection to guard yourself. Those, what is, those walls got to come down in these situations. One of the words out there that's used a lot is boundaries. I put up boundaries. And we're, we're putting up boundaries in this it's relationship. A touchy, this is a touchy subject. Very touchy subject. And so I hope we don't step on any toes, but the boundaries. Well, you know what? In a, in a marriage relationship, um, in that scripture, when we're going all in, all in to love the Lord with everything we have and then love our spouse, there can't be boundaries. Uh, I think, th okay. Am, oh, you're saying I'm... There's some boundaries, <laughs> of course, but what we're talking about, because we I do talk keep... about this in tracks, is that the boundaries of, oh, I'm only going to love this far and, you know, this is as far as I can go, because Jesus doesn't do that with us. Jesus doesn't put up a roadblock and say, uh, you know, I'm going to only love you this much. He loves us unconditionally. So yes. that's what we're talking about with the right. boundaries. Right. Is being able to say, um, the Lord, to, to have us not put up these boundaries where we make all the plans. We make right. all the rules. We have to go by what the word says. Okay. Still, um, let's see if I can get to my comments. Can you? Do you have any comments that you can no. get to? I think we're still a little locked out of our comments here. This one might have it. 
our wonderful amazing assistant's going to check it out so anyways choosing love every day in all things and i want to read to you um actually you want to read you have it yeah we're going to read to you just the first corinthians love because it's amazing this is three different um, versions put together i want to encourage you guys to love like first corinthians says to love yeah it so is scandalous so we're talking about love in 1 Corinthians 13, 3 through 7. It tells us, If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So, no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. And if I were to be so bankrupt generous as to give away everything, I own to feed the poor and to offer my body to be burned as a martyr without the pure motivation, motive of love, I would gain nothing, nothing of value. Right. Love never gives up. Love is large and incredibly patient. Love cares more for others than for self. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love refuses to be jealous when blessings come to someone else. That really is a huge one because we can be tempted to grumble when somebody else is blessed. Love does not brag about one's achievements nor inflate its own importance. Love doesn't strut. Love doesn't have a swelled head. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love doesn't force itself on others. It isn't always me first. Doesn't fly off the handle. Doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. Doesn't revel when others grovel. Love is a safe place of shelter. For it never stops believing the best of others, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. I love that. Um, I was meeting with uh, one of the wives that we coach, and what she was saying the Lord was showing her to put her name in there. So it would be Regina never gives up. Regina um, always believes the best. Like put your name there mm -hmm. and and see if that is your heart. Is this? Can I truly say this is who I am? That I am this kind of love. So that's a little bit of homework for you guys. Yeah. Um, so we we promised we'd also talk about unity. So I want to get that in before it's time. So in talking about unity, one of the things that happened early on, we share right. this. Uh, probably a few weeks ago, but right. since we have tracks coming up September 23rd, 22nd, it's this Friday and Saturday, join us online or in person, get a promo code and you can get a discount. But we would love to see you guys there. Sign up, you won't be sorry. So what we saw in the very beginning of our ministry when we were um, praying for couples, we would see a wedge. And so it's like a wedge that you split uh, uh, lumber with, that you split rounds with it's a it's a, you hit it with the hammer and it splits the wood in half and what we saw was a wet to guard or keep unity mm -hmm. and so we like to apply that in marriage that we need to be proactive we need it's a choice everything that happens in your marriage is a choice you get to input things you get to not say things you get to be present, you get to love. Yeah. And so unity is the same way. We get to choose to honor this, the spirit of unity in yes. our lives. And when we make that choice to honor unity, it's so simple. The next thing we do is we make the next choice that honors unity. And then the fifth choice and the 10th choice. Mm -hmm. If I do this, will it honor unity? Probably not, I shouldn't do it, simple. That's where we get tripped up. Oh, I just want to do what I want to do. Well, if it doesn't honor unity, <clears throat> you shouldn't do it. If, I just want to say what I want to say. If, that, if it's going to hurt, it's not honoring unity. You can have a conversation, yeah. talk about things. Mm -hmm. We talked last week about communication. 
but we want to do and say things, value each other and value unity and honor a spirit of unity in our marriage. There's another scripture that I love that says, um, so a household divided against itself cannot stand. That's so true. Jesus said, people be logical. If a kingdom is divided against itself, it will collapse. And then Proverbs 14, one says, a wise woman builds up her home and a foolish woman tears it down. She tears it down with her own hands, her actions, and her heart attitudes. That goes for men and women. Absolutely. I can think of times past when there's a thing that you decide to say, you consider saying, which is going to bring division. And when you you end up blurting it out in any ways, you don't listen and you it's just you can't get it back, and it brings that division. So we have to pull those words back. We have to just hold on. Don't let those things fly right. and um, remain in yeah. unity. Words and actions that, words and that actions. will bring um, division, division into our marriage. We have to guard unity. We have to protect unity. We have to honor unity. Yeah. And if you want it a little bit, <laughs> And um, let's see, what else did we want to talk about unity? Just talking about family division, not just marriage, but family, family. division. Um, that is one of the issues that we've had in our life is just, you know, with siblings and so forth, our own, and just seeing division come in and where we have said things or, um, and maybe implied things that we shouldn't have, or we've responded to things the way that we shouldn't have. Yeah. And of course, we are extremely sorry for those things, but it has taught us to guard relationships, mm -hmm. to honor them, to honor others. We don't, one of the things we've found out in our years 40, almost 42 years of marriage, is that we are not always right. Right. No one is always right. Um, you know, just giving out your opinion and making your statements because you know that you're right, it hurts other people and it hurts relationship. Mm -hmm. And God is all about relationship. That's how he loves us in a deep, intimate relationship. That's how he calls, uh, this is how we're to love. And so we need to make sure that our words and our actions will honor what God ship with one another. And so we just encourage you guys to join us for tracks where we yeah. can talk a lot more about unity and about love and how it's a choice. And if you guys, are you still spinning? Yeah. So I, I love what you said. I mean, you know, what you touched on is the family relationships. And, you know, for, for those of you who are parents, older parents like we are, and you have grown children, and as you have those discussions of things of the past, or you think about, you know, the reality is for many of us, we're doing the best we could with what we had to work with. At that time. And like Regina said, we're not always right. We don't know everything. And so when there's that point of discovery that, you know, I really blew it on that one. I didn't do well on that one with my son or with my daughter. And um, as you're having conversations, it's never too late to right. say, I'm sorry. To be humble. Yeah, to, to be humble. To admit you were wrong to or say, you didn't have you know, all the answers. And, you know, as they share in their latter years, you know, how, how whatever it is you did affected them or what their interpretation is, you know, um, it's okay to say, you know, I am so sorry. And just be honest, you know what, that... I didn't know what I was doing at that time, and I'm so sorry that I did it that way, and will you forgive me? Right, and, and we always say, I, my big line is, you know, I parented with a lot of fear, and therefore there was a lot of control. I lived in a lot of religion, and what I've learned now is to parent with grace, mm -hmm. to parent in relationship um, of trust, and, and just the grace of God upon all of us, and so we have to be the people who would humble ourselves to say that to our kids, and it's healing for them if they'll accept it. We yeah. do have a prayer request. I was request. gonna say, there's a prayer request. Um, I seen he, Ron, he, you, um, you- Hearing needs. Hearing needs. Let's say Houston and my hearing needs. 
Okay. We just speak to your ears in Jesus' name. Yes. And we command them to open in the name of Jesus. Whatever yes. the hearing problem is, we speak to that in Jesus' name. We just command deaf ears to hear in the name of Jesus. And even, uh, I, I just keep seeing sight. We just, um, spiritual sight, physical mm -hmm. sight. I don't know what it is, but we just um, align that as well with the blood of Jesus and in the heart of God to be 100% um, sight, spiritually, physically, hearing, 100% physically and spiritually. And I think more than one person needs that, so grab hold of that. Um, healing from allergies for Ron, red, actually I don't know. Verna. Verna, there it is. I'm like, what is all this? Uh, from severe allergies to food chemicals, medicinal things. Thank you, God. We are praying for Verna right yes. now in Jesus' name against the allergies in your name. And God, we're praying that you would align her body, mind, soul, body, and spirit yeah, completely come on. with you, God. Every part of her would align to the healing presence of Jesus. And Verna, we just do speak healing by his stripes. And God, we're calling in all um i just keep thinking armies of heaven just the army of heaven yes. to come and minister to her to see her through in uh, the situations in life that are tough right now god i'm praying uh angels and just break through in these situations god that you yes, would touch Lord. her you would heal her physically spiritually emotionally mentally and in all relationships ships in jesus name that's All right, it. I think that's it, and we're right at three o'clock. So thank you guys thank so you much. Please in. join us for tracks this weekend. Uh, hit up bridgerelationships.com or the Healing Rooms website for more information. Thanks, guys.